BioBalance HealthCast, episode 113, What a Woman Needs from Her Doctor. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging, covering treatment and solutions that include bioidentical hormone pellet therapy, safe and affordable skin rejuvenation, and spa quality botanical skin care. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. So you are a specialist in treating and taking care of and understanding women as a gynecologist, mm -hmm. and you've spent your whole life doing that, but you're also a woman, and you Good have you culturally uh, adapted to, uh, you're a woman, but you're a physician, you're a professional, mm -hmm. uh, you a mom, are a I'm wage a wife, earner, yeah, yeah. you're all these multiple things, mm -hmm. but you have some real strong uh, opinions about and senses of what women want and what women need. Especially in medicine. Especially in medicine. Because there's so a disconnect. So you bring that knowledge or that perception mm -hmm. to your work as a physician. Mm -hmm. And that's an advantage to you over male physicians because they don't have the same perception or the same background or exposure, you think? Well, doctor, men are trained to be a doctor, but they're not trained to, to speak to the audience. Uh -huh. to who they're, they don't look at a patient and say, oh, this is a woman, I'm going to speak to her that way. Not In general, I'm not speaking about every doctor, but in general we're trained to just speak to a patient but not to speak to a person as a woman or a man. And not to, we, aren't, we aren't trained to, to please a patient. Uh -huh. But truly, if you want to get really good medical care or give really good medical care to a patient, mm -hmm. you have to speak to your audience. You have to speak to the person in front of you. I speak to women differently than I speak to teenage women, than I speak to men or teenage men okay. when I'm taking care of them. Right. I think I think about their sex and their age before I approach them. But one of the things that medicine has left out is we're trained to talk to men, basically. Male patients. Yeah. All right? Because doctors have always been traditionally men. So the training lags behind the sex of the doctors. You know, most doctors were men when I was trained. So is but that a right brain, left brain thing? Is now that it's one a of those half linear and half thing. data, you know, give the man the factual information and don't worry about the feelings? You know, because yeah, I grew that's, up in a generation like where, where boys were taught to be, you know, little John Wayne replicas. Suck Smoke up and don't you cry. Them. Men don't cry. You know, cry. we aren't, you know, you don't have feelings. You're just My dad used to say to me, son, if you need to cry, I'll give you something to cry about. Yeah. You know, yeah, and otherwise stop it. Yeah, that's uh, a very... <laughs> That that's, was a very southern male thing, yeah. but that and was girls his were, generation. That's what everybody thought girls were going to cry over everything, so no one told women the truth because they were afraid they cry, and men get uncomfortable when women cry. But th what we're going to talk about today is what do women it's, want? It's a weapon need? that women use to manipulate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just figured that out. Okay, <laughs> so but but the real the real issue here is that women need a different type of approach mm -hmm. from their doctor to them when they have a problem or when they go to the doctor they want something different than a man wants okay when they when a man goes to the doctor yeah. and no one is teaching the young doctors this so the issue here is is disconnect how do women get the right health care how do they find somebody who will talk to them the way they need to hear it Mm -hmm. There's always the way someone delivers something to you and how you receive it. Right. They, we need to talk to women. <laughs> what I say and what you hear are two can, different things. Well, that's true. Yeah. Everyone hears things differently. Right. But in general, there are generalizations we can say sure. about women. No matter how different we are, mm -hmm. there are certain ways because of our hormones and our brain development that are hardwired, and we have to be talked to in a certain way. Otherwise, we shut down. We're not going to hear a thing. And if we feel first of all, that our doctor's not compassionate. Mm -hmm. Well, do you think they choose doctors by their compassion level? No, they choose us by our grades. They should choose us by our compassion level, hmm. but they choose us by our grades and how well we can take a test, which has nothing to do with medicine, and that's a problem. But 
Doctors should be smart enough to know that women need compassion when they're being spoken to, and women need to be heard. So when, when a woman comes into my office, I ask them to tell me their story. Now, granted, I have long appointments, and I do, yeah. if the story gets into what did I have for breakfast today and stuff, I do try to bring the story to how did you get to the point where you felt so badly about your me medical s or physical state and mental state that you came here to, to get your hormones replaced. And this is when you're talking to women. Right. But you also treat a lot of right. men. Yeah. Do you speak the same way to men? Because I don't know that I'd know the answer. You'd, men, yeah, men don't want to... Men don't attend, at least classically and historically, men are not taught to pay attention to their bodies. You know, right. I don't know what illnesses I've had in my lifetime. I don't know what medicines I've taken. That's why I, I don't have know what everyone... My son, we need a wife or a daughter. No, Keep we have everyone that. fill out forms, <laughs> and forms are important to us because but I don't women know the fill answer. them out, but you fill them out at home so your wife can tell you. And I'll bring her with me, and then and she well, talks that, and to that you, does help. and she tells you what I but feel and what I've had. You know that that's not what happens. That's what a lot of men do. Well, that's true, but that's not what, what would happen in your case. But but we, I ask men specific questions, like when did this start happening? Can you tell me about that? Yeah. You know, can you tell me when this, when, when you noticed that you weren't, you weren't really energetic anymore, when your attitude changed, when, when your mood changed, when you and got I, ED? And I would bet you that most men are not able to answer those questions. They do. They actually do. In detail and accurately. Well, I don't I'm know if really it's surprised. accurate. It's their opinion. All I want to do is get them to get a speak. Frame. Okay. To speak right. to me and give give me the picture of their problem. And and with okay. men I do a okay. lot more. So see what we're doing here is male female right. because I'm looking for the sort of the factual evidentiary level point of turn and you're fleshing out a painting. Right. You're getting a picture. I have to have a picture of you for me to okay. treat you. Well, that, that but makes what sense. women want is that yeah. They want their doctor to be interested in them enough mm -hmm. to ask them what their story is and then ask specific things, which I get from my, my forms, you know, what, what you filled out. You know, all of the information I need is asked on those forms. Yeah. I want to hear the story because that tells me how sick you are, how, how much it bothers you. I mean, does, did you come in because your mom or your or your husband or your brother or sister asked you to come in to see me? Mm -hmm. Did you come in because you wanted to have help or not? Because mm -hmm. there's a big difference. You know, if you want to have help, it's much easier to help and make you healthy than it is to help you if somebody else wanted you to help. And we, we've had a couple or two like that that we've had in common where one of them wanted the other one to come or they both wanted the other ones to come. Well, and certainly in my business, that's chronically true for men coming to therapy. They come because right. somebody made them. Right. If you don't go to therapy, we're getting a divorce. If right. you don't get treatment, you're losing your job. They don't come because they were sitting around the house one day thinking, you know, life just hasn't been good. But women don't come for that either. Women have a lot of un unspoken unhappiness that bring them to a counselor. And they yeah. let it build up, and they smile all the way through it, and then all of a sudden it explodes, and they oh, come yeah. to see you. Yeah. Well, the but, presenting problem is never the real problem. <laughs> but... One of the, I mean, I'm, I'm getting off task here, too, because right. we're having too much fun talking. But um, all, all doctors who want to make their female patients better should attend to what women want. want women have a sixth sense of what's wrong with them. Uh -huh. Doctors should hear that sixth sense. Well, if they say, well, I just felt like something terrible was happening. Yeah. Well, that really means something. It doesn't mean you're crazy. It doesn't mean you need a psychiatrist so or a psychologist. Don't discount that as you a can't blow that feminine. off. Yeah, that has to be listened to because the sixth sense has saved in my practice babies' lives and mothers' lives. And I mean, they say there's something wrong. I know it. I know I'm gonna, you know, an OB more than anything. Right. It's almost like they plug into the sixth sense more yeah. when they're OB patients and when they're pregnant. So it's really helped me take care of them. Yeah. What if I wouldn't have listened? But women want that. They want to hear their doctor reflect. Now tell me about that. They do. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm having this vision. The comparable thing is when a man takes his car 
to the mechanic, and the mechanic says, "What's wrong with it? Oh, it's making a funny noise." And it mm -hmm. and it's making. You know, well, what's the noise sound like? Oh, that sounds like. I mean, you have those conversations with women, and they can do that about their bodies or their yeah, children's bodies, right. and you make sense out of that. Yeah, I do. That, that's but awesome. most but most doctors who have learned to interview someone and that is part of our training yeah. how do you checklist, interview checklist, somebody checklist. how do you get the proper information out now mm -hmm. in the old days when I was trained which is over 30 years ago we wanted to know what the whole person looked like what the whole person's sickness looked like because then we were more able to take care of the different things that were bothering them nowadays because of HMO medicine because money is a huge factor because money paid to doctors is decreased, visits are shorter. Right. And so that makes us much more focused on one thing. Now, I have the luxury, and I, I know it's a luxury, of having a practice that isn't run by HMOs or, or anything else because it's self-pay. It's I have long, long visits because I do want to know everything. And I put it all together to figure out what's wrong with everything about that person, their nutrition, their exercise, their, their vision of themselves, their goals, are they achievable? And their illness, their so you're hormone replacement. you not limited places. to symptom management or crisis intervention. I'm not. And sadly, most doctors nowadays are. And I'm so sad that that's true. But it's reality. So we have to adjust. If you can't adjust, mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to get anywhere with the doctor. You're just going to be angry when you leave. So because we have to fit in the system, women adjust very well. We should be able to say, okay, I've got three things that are bothering me. And you should know those when you walk in the door. You should write them out. If your doctor's visual and not auditory, hand him the list. But don't put down like what you had for breakfast and, and you know, how many times you had a bowel movement in a day, unless, of course, your primary problem is diarrhea. Right. But, I mean, that's something you need to adjust to your atmosphere as a patient. Right. You know that that doctor is going to have like 10 minutes. Give him the right information. Cut to the chase. Right. Cut to the chase. No right. long stories. Now, in my office, I ask for the story. Right. Different. Right. Whole different circumstances. A whole different way to do it. Now, the third thing the doctors don't know about what women want is that we have our own underground network. And all of you ladies out there and friends of mine and are saying, yep, we do. Because you get information about health care from each other, mm -hmm. from your mother, mm -hmm. from your sister, and internet, of course, but that has to be judged against what's real and what isn't real. Yeah. And of course, this is internet, so, you know, hopefully, you know, we were, I'm very honest about backing up what we have to say. Right. However, you also talk to your hairdresser. You mm -hmm. know, if you're a girl, you're, oh, she tells you where to go. In fact, most women will listen to their hairdresser over their doctor telling them what doctor to go to, okay? So that's, that's a little scary. That is scary. Because they trust their hairdresser. If they've gone to them very long, they've trusted them to take care of their hair and to make them look good. They trust their word, even if that person isn't, you know, isn't educated enough to know if that's good advice or not. Right. That person has, is a, is it a maven? She's collected all this information yeah. from all yeah. of her clients and she says, well, 10 of my clients go to this doctor and she's great. Right. So you should go to her. What is great? Great means she listens. She fe gives you feedback. She, act excuse me, she actually gets into your problem and gives you an answer. Mm -hmm. She doesn't just go, uh-huh, 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 see you next week. You know, she get, it's, it's an active visit. So also, she believes your sixth sense. She is I mean, those are all the things that should happen I in the to, visit. I have to tell you, you said that and you saw me smile. I have, through the years, had a number of clients in my practice who have been patients of yours. And they have said to me any number of times, and I'm thinking women specifically, and not, not men, because I don't know that any men have said it. Uh, but I can think of a half a dozen women that have said they love their visits with you, because you give them a reason and an explanation for every symptom they have and every treatment you offer and a clear path to evaluate if they're getting better. I mean, there are specific markers and hooks that you identify and share with them that they feel so grounded by because they have that information. Mm -hmm. You aren't just being the doctor that says, take two of these and call me in the morning. Right. And you don't say, okay, uh, come back in a week, come back in a week, come back in a week, just so that 
uh, you get a bill for another office visit. That's I always did that, whether I was in HMO, yeah. PPO medicine or not. Well, and because we've known each other long enough that I had that kind of practice as well. I can't practice any other way right. because when I go to a doctor, I want to tell him, the pro tell him or her the problem. I want him or her to hear me, and then I need a plan mm -hmm. and an explanation of why that plan is good, why I should do that, and what could I expect. Those are very important, and you should expect that out of a doctor. And if, if even guys should expect that out of a doctor, a to-do list. What's my to-do list? If they start walking out of the door and don't give you an answer to your initial question, then you should say, doctor, excuse me for a second. I came in because... I had a headache yeah. and I didn't get an answer about why I have a headache or what you would like to do to evaluate it or how I should treat it or how you'd like me to treat it. So would you please sit down and tell me what you can do for my headache? That's your primary complaint. That's a, I mean, that's what we call it in medicine, a complaint. So that's your primary reason to be there. Mm -hmm. So that's something you should get an answer for and supporting evidence of. That's normal, good conversation and, and it is the center but isn't there a challenge for the a doctor medical because so many patients are non-compliant yeah and you have this conversation with me and we're face to face mm -hmm. and we're both clearly focused and you say all right you need to stop drinking diet soda do these things eat this diet mm -hmm. low carb uh, exercise blah 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 take these pills uh, and you'll see this progression and I'm going yeah uh -huh. Well, okay. I always tell them that I'm going to test their blood and I'm going to know if they followed my <laughs> advice or not. When they come back in three or four months, I'm going to be able to tell. They can't lie to me. Right. So they know that I'm checking, that I have evidence that yeah. is not something they can schmooze me with. Well, I don't and think they're lying to you. I, I think they're <laughs> lying to themselves. I think No, they but don't. I know. But they tend to, right. if, if they believe what I've told them is good for them. Yeah that what I'm doing is going to make them better, that they will have a better life and a longer, mm -hmm. healthier life, that's what they want. Yeah. Then I tell them what they should do, and if they do, don't do it, I ask them why they didn't do it, and then we go on. I have a few people that can't quite get off the, get, get off the dime and do it, but I, I you know, it's not every week, but you know, when I see them, I ask them those questions. Yeah. You have to have good notes because I can't remember that. If I see you in a grocery store, I'm not going to remember the five things I told you to do and how and ask you if you did them. I might, but yeah, I, I, I probably won't. Listening to you talk about working with women, what I'm hearing is that being a good doctor involves being a good therapist because the skills right. that you're talking about are the skills that certainly I was trained to have and trained my students to have as far as being a good family therapist or individual therapist you have to see the whole picture you have to mm -hmm. listen between the lines you can't just do symptom management uh, you have to understand that people lose their way and you can't yeah. be judgmental you can't be judgmental but you, you can't have be angry. reality it's, test it's not, no, your, it's not it's about not you, about you. Exactly. it's about them yeah it's about I'm ecstatic. There's nothing that makes me happier than seeing people come back and they're better. Yeah. I mean, I love practicing replacement hormone medicine and, and this integrative kind of medicine because what I do has a 95% success rate. I haven't ever had a 95% success rate except maybe in surgery. And, it, and so it's more that's, holistic. 95% success rate in terms of the improvement of the quality of their lives. Right. Not I, just Just one management. little symptom. It's just everything. Yes. So that makes me happy. It and gives me pleasure. The science, the art, and the relationship of medicine all come together. Right. And that's and that's hard to find out from looking at a website and seeing if a doctor is going to be good for you. Yeah. It's easy to find out that kind of thing if you're talking to your hairdresser. So you have to do both. You have to get the the information from WashU website or St. John's website, or they call them Mercy now. Yeah. Anyway, in all, where do they go to school? Where do they train? Oh, yeah. What, what do, you know, yeah. do they have any problems what with their license? What boards are they on? Right, yeah. and what charitable things do they do? Are they good people? Do they want to take care of other right. people? Right. That's what medicine's all about. So, um, so it's very important to do that, but it's just as important to ask your friends and your neighbors yeah. who they would refer their mother or sister to. Now. Women judge doctors by their personality. I, I've had people <laughs> say, well, I, 
it's interesting. I send people to other doctors. Right. I don't send people to many doctors who aren't a nice, kind, loving, caring right. doctor who wants to right. make them better. There's only a few. Now, there are a few doctors that have no personality, but they have a skill in their area They're that unique. is so extremely yeah. excellent, I prepare the, doc the patient for it. Right. I say, look. They have no bedside manner whatsoever, yeah. but they know this stuff. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and I collect a small number of doctors to refer to. Yeah. And if I say, you need to go to Michelle Kane, I don't yeah. have to say anything else. She's awesome. She's everything that I would be if I were an internist, everything I'd want in an internist. Yeah. I love this gal. She takes care of my patients. Right. And she takes care of them well. She's very smart. But if I'm going to send them to somebody else who I won't, re won't mention because... I don't want to hurt their feelings, <laughs> but they don't have a personality, but they're skilled in surgery or they're skilled in a s technique that isn't found anywhere in the city. Yeah. So I'll say, I'm sorry, this person doesn't really have the personality you're looking for. Remember that, but just ask good questions. Right. Because they won't have these skills. Not everybody's built the same way. Right. Right. So, but they are very technically good. And they can do things I could never do. So I tell people that because personality is so big for women. Men too, but you know you need communication. Well, I, probably in in my business, ninety five percent of my clients have come from other clients or their family members, people mm -hmm. that saw the results and said that was good. Mm -hmm. And so then you when have a they're great out reputation. They're and, they're always talking about you. Too bad you don't. <laughs> I want Brett to go back into normal practice. <laughs> yeah, well, come out of retirement. <laughs> uh, but but to sum up. What we're talking about is, is the magic of relationship, awareness, empathy, time, science, all blending together in a gestalt, in an mm -hmm. experience of the moment that makes the patient feel like they're the center of your attention, mm -hmm. that you know what you know, and you're going to be able to help them, and they feel good about it, the environment, the surround, the physical surroundings, are comforting and safe. Mm -hmm. Your attention matters to them. The uh, attention of my employees. I mean, it's very important to have your office staff yeah. under under the same umbrella and the same um, the same motto or the same business mentality and practice mentality, so that everybody exudes the same kind of care that you do. Because if you don't do that. And this is where we put our heads together and sing, people who need people are the oh, luckiest. You can hire people like that or you can train them. Yeah. I've had you come in and talk to my staff. Yeah, you have. And, and you made them better. But you, the doctor has to care enough to do that. Right. And, has to, and that's care about their patients, not just their staff. Which is what I do now instead of see clients. Yeah. <laughs> he takes care of large groups of people and makes sure that then just by by like the domino effect, you take care of my staff who then takes care of all of my right. patients. And so everybody is happy. <laughs> so, I mean, to me, that's huge, but many doctors don't see that that's even important. Right. They just hire somebody. They don't see the value of it. It's not just it. Their, the, the brain they're hiring, it's their personality as well. They're the, the face to all of your patients. People on the phone are important. So I'm not saying we're perfect, but that's, that's our, our interest and that's what we want to, to exude. We want to exude an extension of what my best day is. Right. Not my worst day. <laughs> so again, the message is be an active and involved consumer. Be aware of what you are looking for, what when you know when you are seen, you know when you are cared about, you know when there's a connection that makes you feel safe and satisfied. And then you objectively look beyond that to see if you're getting better. And so you, you need the, those things in tandem. And, and, and I wrote, and this was really, this talk was really secondary to an article I wrote for doctors telling them what I thought they should know about what, what women want and need when you're in their office. So I was try, attempting to suggest and, and cajole doctors into thinking about those things when they're talking to a patient because healing healing their body is is only one part of healing their soul and their mind and their emotions so that's i just was trying to bring that to them now you need to bring it to them from the other side
Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. Follow Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Brett Newcomb can be found at brettnewcomb.com.